Fare Polorin, Hos Armene, Such Komeng Podcasting, Uning Hedes Harut, Nich Peses I Sol. Shot love, Tu Nich Peses. Shot love, shot love, shot love. <laughs> I'm sure you guys heard we are 542 kilometers away, as Harut mentioned earlier. I was not expecting this crowd here tonight, so thank you, Toronto, thank you for so being much. with us. So, round of applause for that. Thank you very much for everyone for uh, your response and support. I also wanted to thank everyone, the sponsors, the people that helped us put this event together. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. What is this podcast about? Let's, let's give them a bit of information for those who don't know. Armen and myself have a podcast in our city, Hi Renove. Uh, Yev, we discuss real estate related topics in our province rules and regulations, yep. and we try to give information to the people that listen to our podcast so they can make better decision when it comes to real estate. It's typically questions that... Questions that we get from the QR code that you, some of you have scanned tonight to send us some questions, which I've gathered few, and, Thank I, will, you very much. and I will invite the guests to answer some of them here for us. If you guys have the time, you can look at us on YouTube under Surj official to watch some of our podcasts and if you're busy you can subscribe on our spotify and apple podcast to be able to listen on your way to work yeah basically we grab a coffee together that's why and we discuss that's why we named it Suj Makameng. so for tonight i would like to invite weekend jakalian weekend jakalian from service financier jaka we have some questions for you from the crowd uh, baron weekend thank you ramatek Suj Makameng. zero Vikan, thank you again for being with us tonight. Thank you, guys. I would like to ask you a question. I have a few questions for you from the audience. I will ask one and pass the other one for Harut. Is home insurance the same as mortgage insurance? Good question. We get this a lot, and they are not. Two different things, both equally very important. Uh, like I said, mortgage insurance is to protect the debt you have, the mortgage you have with the bank. Uh, it, it covers all that. The home insurance is, it covers the building itself and everything inside. So it protects you from water damage, fire damage, uh, theft, all that. So both equally very important to have. Interesting. So one is for the belongings and one for exactly. the Exactly. Okay. Another question we have from the crowd. What happens if we wait to buy the insurance? Great question. So waiting has a few little things that could happen. First, you have the rate that will change with your age. So the older you get, the more expensive the insurance will get. Also, you never know how healthy you're gonna be in a few years if you wait. So uh, if you develop a little health issue, rate might change, we might have to go a different carrier to find you the product that we need. So the best way to do it, to do it young, when you're fully healthy, you'll lock in a great rate and a great product at that time. They say the best time to buy insurance is when you don't need Exactly. And you don't need one when you're very young. And thank you for that because you did give me that advice and thank you and for that I'm protected. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Well, you thank go. you very thank much. You thank weekend. you guys. Thank, thank you very us. much. Thank you. Next. Next we have Tamara Patak Falvi from Patak Falvi Noter. We have questions for her from the crowd. I can... Uh, yes, I have two questions for her. Thank you, Tamara, again yes, for being hello, with us. Merci. So the first question is, difference between notary for, for the province of Quebec and notary public of Ontario? Yes, good question. Most often people think they're the same thing, same profession, but in Ontario or any other provinces, a notary public is a commissioner of oath. So they authentify a document versus a notary for the province of Quebec, like we just saw, is a legal consultant. And notaries, besides real estate transaction, anything that is non-contentious, meaning there's no conflict, notary, notaries will have jurisdiction on that. So lawyers in, in, in Ontario, each party have their own lawyers, so in order to protect their, bo uh, their own interests, right? Yes. You act as an impartial party. Exactly. In transactions. Exactly. I have learned over time. <laughs> yes, it to yes. Harut, before you ask your second question, I just wanted to say everyone that sent the question that have, uh, will not be answered here tonight, we will pass it on to each individual in their industry and they will later on answer you through your email. 
when you signed up to come in. Another question we have from the crowd, if both parties cannot sign virtually and I cannot physically be present, is there a way to still close the transaction? Yeah, so a good question. Uh, in Quebec, how it works, both parties, so meaning the purchaser and the seller, have to agree to sign remotely. If that is not possible for the seller, what we could do is we can draft with the purchaser a legal document that's called a power of attorney. Probably a lot of you have heard about that. So we can do a specific power of attorney, meaning for this transaction only, or we can do a general power of attorney, depending on what your needs are. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Thank, Thank you. you for we are lucky that all of our Toronto investors so far yes. in our history have always transacted with you. Yes, Thank yes. You Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Next up. Next up, we have Inspection FM, Firas Mansour. Where is Mr. Mansour? Welcome. Mr. Firas has been serving the Armenian community in our city for over a decade now. True story. Yes, he is very known and uh, respected in our community. Uh, you forgot to mention earlier that um, the team has made 1,000 inspections last year, that you mentioned it, which is substantial, by the way. But you alone have done 365, I, uh, the birds told me, the little birds told me, 365 home inspections in one year, it's one per day. That is a lot of knowledge and experience uh, that's the reason why we love to work with you and the community also does because basically you know pretty much every, you, you even know my house, right? So you know exactly what are the problems you and know issues my that too. need to be addressed. <laughs> Everybody's house basically. So thank you for that. I have to we say, have questions. I have to yeah. say I get a lot of help from my team. I yes, of course, of course, definitely. So Firas, let's answer some questions. Shoot. We know you inspect outside, inside, attic, roof, etc. What don't you inspect that I should get checked by another professional? Good question. So uh, sometimes we inspect during winter and we cannot inspect the pool. We cannot inspect the jacuzzi. All those things are excluded from our inspection and should get inspected by a completely separate professional. We don't even have the competence or the knowledge to check those things. So fireplaces, anything external like above ground pool or in ground pool, uh, jacuzzis, spas, all these things are not, or in Quebec anyways, never included in the regular home inspection. What if you have your bathing seat suit sitting in the <laughs> back of your trunk, is that? Even if I have <laughs> is that a valid seat, inspection? I don't inspect the pool. <laughs> we have another question. Do you simply point out what's wrong or will you give me recommendations on how and when I should fix the issues? Okay, so we will definitely point out what's wrong, but we will also give out recommendations on how and when, basically which order, which one is more important, how to fix the issue. So once we spotted a problem, we'll try to analyze and guess what's the cause, so we can go ahead and do the recommendation and recommend the correct professional for this specific problem. Obviously, you have also pictures in the report, but yeah, we don't only spot the problems, we help you with the process because what's the point of? Yeah, luckily we do have, as we mentioned earlier, many, many partners in the Armenian community in our city that we work with. Whenever Firas does any type of recommendation, we always have people in our network that can give us quotations, do the work, people that are professional, reliable. So whenever Firas, recommend something, he usually also kind of follow ups with those other people to make sure that the job that, the, the whatever the issue he saw is that is addressed properly by that person. Thank you very much for that, Firas. I'll be on the other side. Thank you, Thank Firas. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, we have Serge Aharonian from RBC. RBC Mortgages, Mr. Serge Aharonian, please come up on stage. Thank you, Rame. Suj Mekhameng? Rame. Cheers. Pariegeres. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uremen, inch hearts on the running. So, Serge, here's the first question Are we going to pay more in income taxes since we will be having a passive income? 
Very, very good question. Very good question. The answer to that is yes and no. The reason why it's, uh, let's take the example that we took earlier on Edward Street. We were at 599 positive cash flow uh, income. So that makes around $7,200 approximately a year that you have to pay on your income taxes usually, right? Because it's extra income. But since you had put $45,000 in renovations, you can amortize that on the next five years. So that 45,000 divided by five, it's gonna cost you around 9,000. So that 7,200 that you were positive cash flow, it's minus 9,000, so you're negative. In reality, the first five years, you can keep on doing that. I would recommend to speak to your fiscalist and accountant, but that's what it is. You can amortize it on five years, you're gonna be negative, you're not gonna pay any income taxes. After five years, if you don't have any other renovations or any other expenses, eventually you're gonna start paying income taxes. Very good question, thank you, yeah. This is an interesting one. I don't have the entire savings for my down payment, but I think I have equity on my primary residence. Are we allowed to dip into that? Of course, yeah. So uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to come to your sa from your savings. It can come from equity that you have built on your property, especially in Toronto. I'm sure you guys built a lot of equity on your properties. So as long as you have 20% or whatever it is, it can come 10% from your savings, 10% from your equity. It doesn't matter. You can do 100% financing. One advantage is if you withdraw it from your home line, home equity line of credit, you can, it's tax deductible, right? So it's going to be 100% financing plus you're deducting your taxes on the down payment itself. So it could be done. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all the questions. And if your questions haven't been answered tonight, like we said, we'll pass it on to everyone in their industry, and they'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, Serge. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you very much. Now, now, over here.